Aloha, beautiful ones. This is Dewi Miley Lim here, your creatrix and host of Quickening. I'm delighted to be here with you all. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules and your lives. Um, you could definitely be anywhere right now. And I know some of you have come from previous calls and jumped on to be on this one. And I wanna respect and honor everyone's time. So most of you have attended before, but not all of you have, and we do get a lot of people tuning in on the replays. So I'm going to give a little overview of what quickening is, why we're here, and really the heart and essence of this beautiful global movement that we're all co-creating. So uh, a little over a month ago, I got an inspired idea to create a primarily LinkedIn-based promotional series. I had attended a series um, about doing a LinkedIn speaker series, and I was instantly um, just kind of drawn in by the idea and was inspired to orient it to the topic of embodied feminine leadership. And I have lots of friends and associates and people all over the world who I've been connecting with online for many, many years, women in particular from conferences and in-person meetings and just all of the ways we connect. Um, and most of them um, I'm connected with on LinkedIn, but I hadn't really ever had a um, experience on LinkedIn that was beyond kind of this static, kind of dry, <laughs> corporate feeling experience. And that's, that, that's not my um, forte, the corporate world. However, um, you know, I was on the platform, mainly using Facebook for business and a little bit of Instagram over the years. And um, I uploaded a copywriting uh, portfolio on to LinkedIn. And then I thought, you know, I should probably get my bio and my page up. And then I started seeing how the platform had changed, especially for people who consider themselves creators. And I'm a creator. All of us here probably are, especially if you're a thought leader and you have your own method or body of work that you've cultivated over the years. If you have an audience and a following, it just makes sense to really be on LinkedIn, even if you're a business to consumer and not just business to business. Um, there is everyone who's on LinkedIn um, is there to receive either like professional development or find a new career, find connections, um, collaborate. And really what we are doing here with Quickening is helping to anchor in this new paradigm way, which is kind of rooted in the old way too, of this round table approach where each of us has value and wisdom to bring to the table and we can all benefit from each other. And to also do away with this old paradigm way of like top down <laughs> um, leadership. This is more about a, a co-creative uh, sisterhood, if you will. Um, and a roundtable approach to sharing our wisdom. And so this topic of embodied feminine leadership can be expressed in a lot of different ways. And um, I'm really giving, so the format is three speakers are featured every week and I give them 10 minutes apiece where it's really free reign for them to speak on any topic of their choice or experience that kind of relates to embodied feminine leadership in some way. And we're coming from different industries and different worlds. So even though I don't have a corporate background, I really wanted to open this up to women who do have experience in that field as well as all of the fields. Because I know that one thing that I've learned from this past three years and the stories that I've heard is that there is innovation. There, is, there are people standing up for what they believe in. There are uh, visionary <laughs> People, there are people awakening in all industries and in all sectors of the world, be it government, be it corporate, be it, I mean, it's, it's happening globally. And we are part of this vanguard of uh, women who are really 
um, embodying our power in, in the ways that we do in a feminine way, in a way that is more inclusive and collaborative and where we're really coming from a paradigm of abundance. Um, the lack is, is starting to like come out of the, the nervous systems and the us versus them separate. Really, it's a, it's a, to me, this is my perspective, is that we're, we're waking up to the fact that we're not separate and that that kind of uh, illusory way of being um, that we've been programmed <laughs> and it goes into every sector of society really institutionally that the separation paradigm is is dissolving and so this is my way of providing a platform for us to um, be in this realm of collaboration and co-creation together and to hear from these beautiful women some of which i've just recently met through other speakers and other friends and some which i've known for a long time so i want to introduce you to our speakers today and at any point, if you have any ahas or, you know, you want to have a question for any of the speakers, go ahead and note that. You can put it in the comments. We will have time after everyone presents to um, ask questions and introduce ourselves and do a little bit of networking. I open up the floor at the end. So I'm going to pin all my speakers and introduce them in the order that they're going to speak. And then I will uh, highlight and pin just that speaker um, as her turn goes. And then I'll come back on briefly and do a transition. So I'm going to pin all our speakers. So these are our beautiful speakers for this week. Uh, let me pull up my, and then come off mute when I say your name and just say hi. Um, actually, we can all be off mute right now if we want to say, say hi, but I just want to introduce each of these beautiful women. So first we have Marna Schwartz. Hey, Marna. <laughs> and hi, happy to be here. Hi. Uh, so I met Marna. Marna, we connected through this series, right? You came to one of our first um, kind of speaker. How did you find out about this? I don't. Even... I don't know. Like the magic of the interwebs, <laughs> uh, you know, Grace. Totally. The myceliating great. network of kindred thinkers and creators. I'm not sure, but I'm glad I did. I know. Well, it's so good. I mean, that's the power of LinkedIn, right? We just happen upon each other when we're meet, meant to connect. So Marna has 20 years of experience in personal development, leadership development as a coach and a health consultant. And she's empowered countless individuals to achieve better health, stronger communication skills and greater success in their personal and professional lives. And after years of running a boutique on-site service for Silicon Valley's elite, she now works with individuals and companies around the world and serves as a guest expert for Tech Lady. Yay. And then we have Deborah, Deborah Smith. And Deborah is someone I met years ago when I lived in Brooklyn. We have mutual friends. And now to re-encounter you, Deborah, in the interwebs, seeing what you're doing. And we had a, a brief conversation right before this about um, what's happening kind of currently now in the world of marketing to see you in this realm. I know you, I knew you as a, a juice bar owner before. So it's really cool to just reconnect. Um, Deborah. I'm happy that you're here. I'm just letting a few more people in the room. So Debra uh, is a holistic health coach, entrepreneur, and former juice bar owner. She helps women build sustainable, holistic businesses and healthy lifestyle practices so they can align their self-care practices with their life dreams and simplify the path to abundance. And then Kimberly is uh, here as well. And I met her through Tessa, who's on the line. Kimberly Hi, Elliott. Hey. <laughs> Kimberly Elliott's the founder of Leadership Wellness, a holistic embodied approach for soulful leaders to feel more confident, nourished, and seen. 
She's a tr uh, trained certified professional co-active coach, embodiment facilitator, and host holds an MLA oh. focused on compassionate leadership. And over the past 20 years, her programs have blended coaching with somatic and expressive art practices to help support women leaders, entrepreneurs, and coaches to slow down, be embodied, and lead well. So thank you, beautiful uh, presenters, for being here. So Martin, I'm going to have you go first. And um, please pay attention to your time. Uh, you'll have 10 minutes to present. And then with one minute remaining, I'm going to give you ladies a ping in your DM and just let you know you have a minute remaining. All right. I will um, move the rest of our pins here. Marna, you have the floor. You're muted, though. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with everyone. Uh, let's just take a moment to just get into our bodies and reach up. Wiggle your fingers and a little bit left. Opening up the lungs, the heart, the torso, and up toward the sky and a little bit right. Oh. And again, up and let the arms come down and shake, 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 shake. Ah, it's so good to be together. Uh, so I uh, live in Albany, New York, and um, this place is traditional land of the Haudenosaunee people and the Mohican people. And the Haudenosaunee people are also known as the people of the Longhouse, also known as the Iroquois um, Confederacy. And um, what you know, it's not my story to tell, but it is the place where my feet are. And one of the things that I like to acknowledge and appreciate about this place is there's a tradition of um, a Thanksgiving address to start all um, conversations, all important conversations. And we won't go through each element, but just know that the whole Thanksgiving address honors uh, the elements of uh, the, the water and the sea and the the um, creatures and the trees. And so um, it's a wonderful thing to participate in. I've insisted on reading it fully uh, at every important occasion. And uh, But the first element of the Thanksgiving address is just gazing around at one another and acknowledging and appreciating how we are coming together in this moment as people. So I'd like us each to take a moment and just look at this, this, the screen, the gallery, if you're able, and acknowledge and see each of the, the beautiful faces who have joined us today. And just acknowledge with your heart each of the beautiful uh, people who are going to, to see this in the future. We, If you're watching this video, we acknowledge you as well. And we're so grateful just to be together as people, seeing that the cycles of life continue on and on. And, uh, and here we are together. And, uh, and as we would say in the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, now our minds are one. So thank you for that. I'm excited to share with you today about um, embodied feminine leadership. And uh, I'll just, you know, as a context, we'll call this segment Embracing Embodied Feminine Leadership. And um, I thought what I would share with you today are kind of the eight uh, aspects that I see as important uh, in embracing feminine, uh, embodied feminine leadership. And, um, and the first one is, is what uh, we just did together, which is an honoring of place and context. Okay, honoring of place and context. Now, why is that important? Well, recognizing the importance of the place and the context helps leaders understand how their actions and decisions impact the wider community, the environment, and the society, right? It's taking on a sense of responsibility and awareness that might not otherwise be there. So this holistic view encourages collaboration and cooperation. So that's the first one. And what you might notice is there is a fair amount of over overlap in each of the keys that I'm going to share. That's okay. Because um, the the it's it's not important to have a linear structure and dot by dot, and I think that's one of my primary takeaways when it comes to uh, embodied feminine leadership is it's not about the 
the the pieces, right? It's about the whole and the uh, the system, right? There's an inherent kind of systems lens, and it starts with where are your feet. Uh, next, I'd like to talk to you about emotional intelligence as a key for embodied feminine leadership, demonstrating empathy, compassion, and understanding towards others while also managing one's own emotions effectively. Now, does that mean you cut off your emotions and leave them at home? No, it does not. What it means is making space for all of yourself uh, because the more you can create space for all of yourself in appropriate and functional ways, the more you can hold space for your community in functional ways, however that looks. Okay, and the more dysfunction inherent in your inner community, the more dysfunction you'll notice around you. So that's why, you know, leaders, uh, Gandhi, right, be the change you want to see in the world. That transformation starts within how much can I be with in myself? And that's reflected with uh, into how much can I be with with others versus getting triggered, which we all get triggered, have compassion. It's OK. But but consistently getting triggered by something specific means mm, where in myself do I could I maybe look with more of a lens of compassion and create more function inside myself? Not always. Often. That's another part. So uh, next key collaboration and inclusivity right this tenant is about prioritizing teamwork diverse perspectives welcoming different ideas than our own and open communication to create a sense of belonging and unity does that make sense creating that that um opportunity right there there are so many leaders who are like if you disagree with me get on out versus if you disagree with me, I'd like to know why. What's going on for you that we can create more of a sense of community and belonging together? Is there a piece that you're understanding that I'm not yet? Um, the next tenet, intuition and holistic thinking, trusting inner wisdom and considering the interconnectedness of all aspects of a situation, right? Because how often do we come back to that? Well, I I just had this feeling, right? That's intuition. And that's not nothing. And that is a glaring missing in a lot of leadership and a lot of organizations today is that space for, I just have this feeling. That's one of the reasons that I love, love, love uh, this form of uh, dynamic governance called sociocracy. And it's this uh, way of facilitation that I've been studying for quite a while now that uh, makes space for like, oh, I just had this feeling. And even the facilitator being trained to recognize other people having that feeling, even though they may not have the words to speak it. Love, love, love that. The next tenet I'd like to speak with you about is nurturance and support, right? Encouraging growth and development in others by providing guidance, mentorship, and resources. This is also a space to talk about growth mindset right? Welcoming failure as an opportunity to get better, as an opportunity to learn. How many of you are recovering perfectionists? Yes, me too. <laughs> and so making that space as a leader to say, I've made mistakes and that's okay. And I've learned from them and that's great. Sometimes I've made the same mistake several times before I learned from it. That's okay too. Because if people don't have permission to make mistakes, there is a lack of aliveness in the conversation and the culture. The next tenet I'd like to talk about is adaptability and resilience. Okay, embracing change, learning from challenges, and responding with flexibility and strength and compassion, right? Having compassion. The next tenet I'd like to talk about is authenticity and vulnerability, being genuine, transparent, and open about one's strength and weaknesses, because that creates a space for other people to acknowledge them, their own for themselves and not put on a show. How many of you have put on a show? Yes, absolutely. The truth is, if you're putting on a show, you're not presenting what's real or true for you, and there is a gap in the organization 
in the efficiency and function of what's possible because you haven't been real. Um, and the last uh, tenet I'd like to speak with you today about is balance and sustainability, striving for equilibrium between work, relationships, and self-care while promoting long-term well-being for all stakeholders, including the ground and the land and the soil under our feet. So uh, I'm so grateful for this opportunity uh, to share with you it's just some of the, the lenses and the facets I see of embodied feminine leadership. Thank you for your kind attention. Beautiful. Thank you, Marna. I'm just going to come by you for a moment. So Marna has a couple of ways to be in touch. Let me, um, I wanted to say to Marna, uh, what, with what you presented just now, do you have it written out or have you documented this in any way? Um, I have my notes, which I'd be happy to share with folks. Yeah, I would. I was just seeing this as one of those LinkedIn style posts that seem to be very popular. If you all haven't mm -hmm. seen them before, where they're like a carousel post and each post becomes a tenant. I love that. What a great idea. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. And I would love to um, yeah, have access to what you just shared. It feels super resonant and juicy. And I'd like to dive in some of the tenants more. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Thank you for the idea. Um, I don't know if we have time or if there are any questions or if we're going to do any questions or conversation at the end. We're going to do it at the end. So I'm just going to post your links here. So please connect with Marna on LinkedIn and check out her website and then save your questions for her at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Marna. Aloha. Deborah, no. Okay, let me just end. I'm here. Myself. And your <laughs> is now yours, Deborah. Amazing. Um, I'm timing myself, Dewey. First of all, Marna, thank you so much for that beautiful total fire share. I live in the Catskills, um, which is Lanape territory but i i'm like i'm coming to find you and we're having lunch i'm like that's my sister we're I, and when she gave your introduction i was like that sounds like me <laughs> but of course we're absolutely uniquely completely different and what you just shared was just so amazing and helpful so i look forward to rereading those tenants um so yeah dewey and i connected 20 years ago before actually before i started my juice bar which began as a food truck on the streets of brooklyn so I graduated from Holistic Health Coaching School at, at IIN in New York City in 2006. Prior to that, I had a career in marketing and brand design, but this was pre-internet, right? So everything that I do now is sort of like a cumulative snowball of these two lives, one of a holistic health coach and the other of an evolving marketer who's always had my finger in, the, in my, you know, my hand in the, in the works of like, how are people communicating? So I held, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, it's gonna be all communications jobs that I had, right? Like I did email marketing for all these big you know, companies and stuff, but at the same time, I owned a food truck that served juice and I was health coaching whoever would let me because it wasn't that popular in the early, like at the time when I first started, um, there weren't as many juice bars, there were certainly no other female owned food trucks. And so I think about this idea of finally feeling like it's kind of safe to step into the more feminine embodied energy as a business owner. And it feels like a relief almost to me because when I started my business in 2007, um, you know, the food truck industry is, besides that it's masculine dominated, um, it's just really gritty and rough. Like it's street, like your business is on wheels. You're in these commissaries. It's only all men, mostly older, mostly immigrant. Nothing wrong with men, love them very much. But in order to sort of survive and not just survive, but thrive as a business, my female business partner and I donned the cloak, like protective coloring in the wild of masculine. I mean, everything from every word that we spoke. I mean, I can cuss like a sailor. Like I have my clothing, the way that I 
spoke to these men so that they would not threaten me, like constantly reinforcing boundaries. We joke now because she runs a massage therapy um, business and I'm a holistic health coach. And we joke about how thick our skin is and how like for us to get into the embodied feminine part of our business, we have to like, sh like scrub off layers of the patriarchy <laughs> and like the masculine systems that create capitalism and create the, the world that we know of as business, like that's everywhere we look. So um, I love to think of that now as sort of just scaffolding that pre-exists. Like if you were to go into, you know, like, I don't know, just an ancient time or a world that's been, you know, devoured and re-envisioned and there's roses and beautiful flowers growing up in these old metal scaffolding and that we are the bringers of new life in this way. And I love this quickening gathering to just be a space for that to be some place that we express. So, um, I can be of service to you in two ways. I, I work with women who are looking to transition their food and exercise and health and wellness uh, through like a holistic lens. I, I do meal planning and just I'm an accountable health coach to them. And then I work with small business owners on their marketing so they can really kind of connect with their more authentic voice. A lot of that is helping people break down stereotypes and become comfortable, you know, being who they are on their own skin and then align that with like technology that delivers a message so they can actually connect with their ideal client and, and actually do business. Um, and there's a lot of stuff inside of each of those revenue lines in terms of how I actually work in the world. But, um, and I know I only have a couple of minutes. So I just went to, I have four minutes and 50 seconds. I went to a conference. I'm in a conference today. That's about, it's called the state of the, the state. It was the state of the union of online marketing. And it's being run by these women who are dominating the industry. And they're all about, you know, embodied feminine leadership in this space. And I thought I would just share something that I took away from that with you right now, because I assume if you're on LinkedIn, um, even no matter what you do in some way, shape or form, you're using the internet to connect with your community and or, um, you know, creating an audience, building an online following, have an email marketing platform. So in some way, shape or form, you're using digital tools to conduct business. Um, so this was something that I was kind of excited to just see it in a list. So, and I'm happy to type this up afterwards. These are just my notes from this conference today, but I'm gonna share it with you now. Um, okay, so these are the top seven trends that are current in terms of like the last couple of months in the year 2023 for digital course creators, digital community, you know, people who run online communities or have a membership or sell a physical product, but use things like, you know, any type like webinars or Etsy, like if you're using a digital platform to sell a product or a service or create a community. And the trends are essentially, you know, what's changed since 2020 when there was a massive influx of online um, courses and just memberships and stuff. So none of this is going to be a surprise to you. All of it's going to be stuff that you already know, but to just kind of have it in a nice little punch list and be checking in with it, I think is useful. So number one is to create more authentic connection with your audience. Unsurprising. That's why quickening is so magnetic because we're in a room together actually connecting and changing numbers and, and and finding each other in real authentic space so that's why this is working so well because that's people are craving authenticity um so in terms of you to your audience that would look like going live on you know whatever tool you use to connect setting up um, opportunities to teach a little bit for free in mini webinars things like that um, going into public spaces like the library and just sharing knowledge like that's super important for building your and even though that's not online that's going to bring people to your email list they become clients eventually um so one is just creating more connections with your audience as much as you can um number two trend is no surprise short form video right so we're seeing TikTok. you know I, i'm not personally on TikTok, but i use instagram reels um and YouTube Shorts is a new one. LinkedIn has a short form video teaching uh, tool that they're rolling out. And I think you're gonna just see that trend continue to shoot skyrocket. So if you're not doing short form video, um, it may seem overwhelming at first, but they've created, it's actually quite easy to create these things using templates and stuff and, and find your groove with it. But that's not going away anytime soon. So if you're not already doing short form video and you wanna use the internet to, to connect with your audience, 
it's a fun thing to explore. I, I used to um, be totally against it. And now I'm like, or for myself anyways. And now I'm like, I look at it as many little movies I get to make. Um, okay, number three, diversifying your offer. That's really about knowing what's happening in your industry and then finding a way to, again, it's all about bringing you to your offer. It's about your authentic voice. Um, number four is having values driven content that's genuine in your marketing materials. So that would look like showing more than just what you sell and, sh and sharing things like you actually living your values, like showing pictures and images of you. If you are like me, I'm a holistic health coach. I'm constantly putting up videos and, and things of me making the juice that I actually drink that I actually. So then when I'm talking to you about making juice every day, it's because I know how long it takes to clean it up because I do it every day. Um, it's just one example. I would also show a video of my husband laughing as I make him drink that green juice because that's a struggle, right? Does he really want it? No, but he's going to drink it because I have convinced him it's good for him. Um, so value-driven content was number four. Um, number five is motivating action. So in terms of like if you have a webinar and if you have an event, um, incentivizing people to show up live and there's a lot of different ways to do that. One of them is, you know, not share like what you yeah, actually this came up today it was kind of a conflicting thing, but not offering a replay video gets people to connect live because when they're live together, we're really in the room together and you're just going to get so much more bang for your buck if we're all actually together. But people are burnt out on zooms and stuff. So that's my one minute warning. Um, so to motivate action with incentivizing um offers that you might give live that you wouldn't give to anyone who doesn't show up live stuff like that um, i actually have a short list of that if you want that hit me up afterwards and then artificial intelligence it's here to stay it's going only forward if you're not if you don't know yet chat gpt and, and like i use kajabi for my platforms it's great for scaffolding a, a short list of you know like a sketching out you know what you might write in your blog you have to use authentic voicing and content AI will not replace the human heart. AI will not replace any of us here. It might replace a few copywriters out there, but long story short, it's here to stay. So kind of check it out. That was a trend that's here to stay. And then the last one is making pivoting inside your business a part of your business plan. And that one really hit me. Like uh, Marna just shared, just like staying fluid, staying connected to the authenticity of the moment, being a surfer and not a swimmer, like really learning that the sea and the ocean are kind of change, especially online stuff. Technology platforms are continuing to ebb and flow. So making that pivot just a part of your business construct and going with the flow and being vulnerable, getting vulnerable inside your, your online space. Um, I just want to also just say one last little thing that if you go to any of the links that Dewey just shared, um, all of that is going to be about health coaching and juice and there's going to be meal plans and detox strategies. Um, I don't have, I took down my business coaching pages just temporarily because I'm rebranding them. So, but if anybody ever wants to, I talk about all that stuff too. So thank you so much for your time. I hope that that was interesting and helpful to you and um, we can chat afterwards. Ah, Jill. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, Dewey. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Deborah. I really appreciate you and it's cool to see some of the similarities that we share and I definitely want to continue connecting and um i know all about the rebranding and the changing and the multi-passionate <laughs> way of being and that's what linkedin's great for you know we can i i feel like linkedin is kind of now become my hub for what's uh, fresh and the latest for me so that i'm choosing to use it in that way okay so i'm gonna bring on miss kimberly elliott now you're uh, a mute. hello my mute button was hidden from okay, me you're, you're, you have the floor for awesome Kimberly. well welcome thank you for showing up everyone first of all and thank you Dewey for creating the space for us I really appreciate it my intention in the next 10 minutes is to bring in more personal awareness through a little bit of practice and to further crystallize your understanding of the connection between embodiment and your self leadership. So I like to start with what is embodiment like from my point of view. And so in the coaching realm, which I am an embodiment coach, 
um, it's really how you are in your body. And it's about being aware of that, right? So that you can have greater choice. And a little add on to that is in embodiment uh, coaching, we also say there's an intent to develop oneself. So it's more than just mindfulness. Mindfulness is the base of embodiment, but it's a little bit more than that. So I'm going to build on uh, Marna. I like. I was like, oh, I get to go last. I can build on what everybody said, which is awesome, and get ac interactive right away. Um, please know that anything we do in the next 10 minutes is a choice and you are in charge. Let's begin with social centering, which we already started with, which was this idea of looking into the squares, into the faces of the, the women that are here. And I want you to, before you start picking a box and looking into the faces, I want you to notice how you are right now. You know, you've been sitting a little bit, did a little movement, what are you aware of? How's your day been? Are you tired? Are you enlivened? Are you starting to get inspired? How do you know this? Is there like tingling in your heart? Is your, do you feel your heart beating? Start to become aware of what's showing up for you. And then when you're ready, make sure you're on gallery view. We're going to just lean in and I want you to actually find scan for a minute first. So look around and notice who you're drawn to and then land on somebody and rest your eyes on that person, the one who's resonating in this moment for you, right? And then, yeah, let's just take that in for a minute. Oh, <laughs> and then I invite you to open. So allowing yourself to really look into your eyes, what would it be like if you were to allow your body to soften 10% more as you connect in with that person? Notice what that does to you, what shows up. And then feel the heartfelt friendliness and receive it right we can always look and then like not take it in and let it let us really take it in and receive it in your body notice what that's like also i invite you to check in and notice someone might be staring at me that i'm not aware of how does that land in your body? What's that like, right? We're always building awareness as leaders. What happens to your breathing? So we're linking right now to each other. We're linking to our values. We're linking to our longings just by having this connection moment. So check in, you can chat if you want. I always love to hear from people. What did you notice about the impact of this version of social centering? What happened for you? Or what values showed up for you that you suddenly became aware of like, oh, I, I love having connection. <laughs> so enjoy the softening and a deeper breath. I'm aware I only have one yerba mate in my system. Great. I feel more grounded and at ease. Beautiful. Greater relaxation in my shoulders. Fun to watch. Watching someone's face. Love scanning my own body at first. So much variety and so much wisdom right here in the chat, right? Love that. Okay, so now that we've landed, I'm Kimberly Elliott. I'm an embodiment coach and I support the leader in you to show up authentically and powerfully while trusting the guidance of your own unique essence. We all got different things out of that little exercise, right? My highest intention for my clients and for you is that you're seen, you're heard and respected as you lead and serve your community. So I do a lot of work with women uh, using the body, embodiment, and I'm gonna invite you again now to do another interaction. Just cross your arms and be, get comfortable and lean back in your chair and, and just keep holding that. Notice the comfort of how you cross your arms and what that feels like for you. And you, you can do it any way you want and you also are at choice to not do it at all. I love this as a metaphor is in that this is kind of the way our world has 
So the way our world's been shaped in our lifetime, along with our conditioning, right, has brought forth many different ways of being and doing for women leaders. Some of those ways are helpful and some of them are not. So here's our comfort. Now I want you to switch the cross. So whichever arm is on top, I want you to put on the bottom now and the one that's on bottom, put it on top. Notice how that feels. Stay with it. Feel what that's like. If it's too much, you can come out of it. You're in charge. And I'm going to ask you to stay in it for a moment, if you're willing, because this discomfort, probably you might be feeling discomfort. You may not. Or, or like, oh, it's kind of different. It's not my normal way. This is what happens every time we as women leaders are asked or told to conform for the comfort of others. When we do not honor our unique essence, but instead try to fit in for acceptance and love. It's a form of disempowerment. And um, some of us have been forced so much that we've forgotten the truths of our power. We've dimmed our own lights. We've become disruptors, maybe, where then people start judging us and we feel worse and disrespected. And in some cases, you might say that many women leaders today are caught in a patterned reactive survival loop. And that's very draining. And then the question becomes, how does this serve my embodied leadership? What can I do? So let your arms go, just shake it out. <laughs> and what we can do is the first order of business is to connect with your inner leader. And that you can't lead if you don't get your shit together first. <laughs> it's just too messy and <laughs> not very helpful. So this starts with connecting to to your inner leader and i invite you just to put your hand on your heart maybe one hand on your belly if you want to stand up you can it can be helpful <sighs> and just take a breath and then if you're seated or standing you can drop your hands to your thighs and just bend over a little bit drop your head and take a couple breaths and just let everything go that was uncomfortable about that cross Blah. Use your hands to support you to come up, come back to the heart, get a little taller in your seat. If you're willing to stand up or not, you can do it in the chair. I want you to take this position of standing with dignity. So that means planting those feet, softening the knees sensing the top of your head reaching to the sky and then just dropping your hands to the sides it's like mountain pose in yoga relax fingers relax jaw let your vision extend forward but be aware of the sides of your eyes looking in that space <sighs> take a couple breaths here it's my one minute <laughs> so fast take a couple breaths here and notice what it's like to connect with the essence of dignity and pride notice what happens with your breathing is this familiar to you what values are here when you stand with this length in the world being seen on camera or not <laughs> And then just say out loud to yourself, I am a stand for and repeat, you know, say whatever word you are a stand for, whatever comes up for you. I am a stand for authenticity. Nobody can hear you. So you can speak out loud your voice. And then I just invite you to place your hands on your hips, maybe make your stance a little bit wider. Keep those knees soft. Feel into your heart, connect with your power, and know that this is the place where your inner leader lies, the place from which all of those wonderful tips and keys that we already received in this call can emerge from versus a tight place. And we'll just do a quick contrast to notice the difference, drop the arms, squeeze a little bit, around your shoulders 
feel that, notice that place. If I were to lead from here and take a stand for something, uh, well, I kind of think authenticity is important, but uh, yeah, how am I doing? And then letting that go, shaking that off and coming back to your stance and embodying that. So this is this is some of the work I do with women. It's super powerful. I'm getting ready to do a big fall women's cohort where we're going to explore the issues that come up for women leaders around boundaries, pushing, pulling, forcing, hiding. And I have a free gift for you today. I think do you're going to put that in the chat, right? You have the link. And the gift is a embodiment guide for your inner leader. So it's three empowerment practices for showing up authentic. And once you take a look at that and check it out, if you want to reach out to me, I offer a free one hour consult to explore how coaching or embodiment might support you in your embodied feminine leadership. So thank you so much for being here. And it's been a pleasure. Kimberly. I know 10 minutes goes by so quick, right? And I loved how varied you still had um, a lot of different elements in your presentation. Thank you. Yay. Well, I would love to open up the floor now to hear any feedback for any of our presenters. Um, I also have a few minutes at the end that I wanted to uh, share a little bit more of something but let's let's take this time now like for the next five minutes or so to just open up the floor i'd love to hear from any of you speakers can come off again too this is just open forum now i loved um being oh go on um so this is the third time i'm here like i spoke couple times and I'm just always amazed like there's so many of us speaking about the same concept and like we're all speaking about it in a different way there's like a different slice a slightly you know but but there's like the mm -hmm. you know there there's things that are connecting right like all the tenants that Marna shared and everything like that like that's like that's something that's connecting everything that we are each sharing and at the same time we each have a different little slice of it and I just think it's so representative of feminine embodied leadership where it's like it's collaborative right like we all have there's that diversity that we were talking about and even though we're talking about the same thing and we can even have like similar offerings like we each have that uniqueness and that diversity and I just love um seeing that so I just wanted to say mm. thank you to all of you also for showing up and sharing your different slices it's beautiful yeah it's I feel like it's our like uniqueness is what like makes feminine leadership so powerful right when we really embody that and stand in our truth around that powerfully it's beautiful yeah Thanks. So I I really appreciated the themes, some of the themes that emerged mm. around um, community and belonging. You know, really embracing differences. Um, you know, it's easier said than done, right? Like we have, there's so much going on in the world, and people are wanting to come together, and so many fabulous new awakenings into social justice and the like. But it really starts with this with ourselves, you know, are we able to trust ourselves to show up with our differences mm -hmm. right? and then holding that space for others? So, Red, and, you know, I know a lot of this is around, you know, for entrepreneurs, but I know that, like, for Kimberly, for sure, perhaps Marna as well, like this, for people, for women who are just, like leaders in their lives, right? Like leaders in maybe in their little department, wherever it is that they work or in management or whatever it is that they're doing, there is a way to feel that dignity, mm. you know, and that pride and to transmit, to be that, 
um, and also managing the emotions so it's not just a bunch of leaky authentic feelings all over the place like too many at once but it's it's um, you know done in an emotionally intelligent way so I just think you know authenticity is the way to go and I really appreciate all three of you here today for bringing what you brought and um, holding, having these conversations so. Thanks, Tessa. I love the, exp I, I love to go with expansion on that. It's like, even it's like, if you're a mom, if you're a teacher, if you're in your church, whatever you do, I, I love that idea of like, when you really honor it, it has impact and it actually vibrationally impacts the world that we're creating together as leaders and as women. And that just feels like so like chills on my body right now hearing that. So I love that you bring that in. Yeah, this, just, this can I just about... add on one one thing oh. there? Sorry. So yeah, I think so what what I'm seeing is like this distinction of of women's roles and, and abilities to have an impact, right? Is no longer the caretaker no longer just the nurturer or the tender right it is liter it really is that leadership from that holistic place inside ourselves so thank you ladies it's very nice today thank you so much and this mm -hmm. there's this piece about courage and trust that i think is a hallmark of these times like no matter what who, you know, where we are in our lives and the way that we express our leaderships. And, and I do love that this conversation is opening up to outside of the business sense, outside of the entrepreneurial sense, as mothers, as leaders in our community, as people within entrepreneurs or, you know, whatever position we have in whatever the hats we choose to don that, you know, there is this part of what's going on on the planet, I believe, is this awakening to our power. And because we have been under this guise that we aren't powerful and that we are separate for so long, it takes a lot of courage and trust to even connect in to this power that we each have, to, to this inner voice, to this inner knowing. And so this open leadership style of how we, how we are each of us starting to evolve leadership and embody more of this for ourselves in our own ways um, does require courage. And for me too, like opening up this, this forum here for us, it's like, I, I don't know who's going to show up and I don't know how it's going to flow. And it's just been a beautiful, uh, fluid and uh, perfectly <laughs> orchestrated. Like I, I can't plan the way that these go, other than the speakers that I'm, you know, curating and choosing, um, but that's really one of the hallmarks of of my my brand, I guess, of <laughs> personal personal uh, personally is of leadership is is to trust that each of the women that show up in the circles that I hold and the spaces that I curate are are meant to be there meant to be here and we each have something valuable to contribute and that's why I chose to have part of this forum be open in this way it's so that we can you know have a, a, a real-time experience of what it's like to be you know many of us have never met before so it's like can we create intimacy can we create uh, a visceral experience of like this quickening in our own lives in a moment in time, you know, an hour each week uh, through this forum and do it in a way that is on our own terms and authentic to us. And so, yeah, I just wanted to like kind of highlight the meta <laughs> experience here, you know, what we're doing and, and please um, share this um, with other women that you know of who might resonate, who might dig this. I have a couple ways uh, to work with me and explore, you know, other containers I have that are, you know, paid and longer term and more of a commitment. I host what I call a creatrix mind called Rebel Heart, and it's really for the visionary trailblazing woman who is, it's a, it's a thought leadership 
and visibility incubator and amplifier. And we're going, I'm opening up the doors again in April. We're going through to the end of the year. And I'm going to be hosting a summit, which is <clears throat> something I've done before and a little, kind. Of, this is kind of like a hybrid model of a summit, but it'll be more like time bound and concentrated. And you'll be creating a, co a piece of content through that interview that I do with the women that are gonna be a part of this. That will be like your quintessential piece of like your thought leadership in a, a 30 minute presentation, something that you could put on like your YouTube channel, let's say as the, the top video. So we're all kind of on that trajectory right now. Um, and I also have a background in marketing and, and messaging and brand development, but really ultimately I'm just here to empower women to, um, to be heard, <laughs> to share our voices and to claim our brilliance and have, ways where we can find the others, you know, we're, we're finding each other here and we're, we're co-creating. So please reach out to all of the sisters here, um, continue to show up. And I do have something I wanted to share really quickly. So I just wanted to, we're midway through the series and Tessa, did you have something? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, you raised your hand. So I wanted to share something uh, real Same. quick. Uh, we're midway through the series. So I just wanted to do kind of like a recap. Um, I have a presentation. I just wanted to show everybody that we presented so far. Um, present. So these are all of our, our can you guys see this? So these are all of our women that we've uh, featured so far. So this was this week. We've had five episodes. This was episode four, episode three, episode two, and episode one. And I've been doing this just basically out of my own inspiration from my own heart. And um finding the way, oh, there was one more slide. I'm basically opening up uh, my receptive muscle and I would love to uh, offer an opportunity for anyone who has received value from this to make a donation towards this. Um, I'm just like doing this on my own time and I would love to, if anybody is feels inspired to donate, opening up that field. Let me give the link. There was another slide, but I this is the link to that. And I'll follow up in the email too, but I have a donate button I created. And this is kind of me, you know, stretching my my ask <laughs> muscle. Um, I definitely have uh, been putting a lot of hours into this, but it really has been from my own joy. It hasn't been averted at all. And I'm going to continue to do it. So if you have received any value at all, please consider making a donation. You can also share this with friends, forward any of the emails. If you know of any speakers that might be a fit, if you would like to speak and you haven't yet, please reach out to me. This is um, a, an open forum and we're going to make this as powerful as we share it. You know, this will grow continue to grow and uh, have a beautiful positive impact the more we share. So that is what I wanted to share with you all today. Thank you all for being here. Does anyone else feel inspired to share anything at all? Welcome. Your hand is up. I, yeah, I just, it was something that you said earlier. I just wanted to kind of piggyback on really honestly. Um, I was thinking like when you were talking about the courage to show up and kind of step into your leadership you know, space or I was thinking about my, why I loved this so much when you first introduced it to me is because LinkedIn for me has been a place that I, I haven't wanted to use because I don't identify with corporate, um, the corporate world, the corporate identity. And my older sister is a, the CEO of a huge company in Boston. She's like the man. And she is so, she's an amazing leader and an amazing, I mean, she is like a savvy businesswoman, but she, like I and so I was thinking about this like I identify LinkedIn to me as a place where all of the all of the women that I know there 
are like, you know, industry leaders in these very masculine roles and these very masculine expressions of self. And I was looking through my 500 or so connections, looking for anyone that looks like the group of women who are here, which is, it was kind of stunning to me. Like all of my connections on LinkedIn are um, people, you know, relationships through former companies that I was employed by. And just, it's very sort of business. It's all business. And I, I really appreciate this forum. And I was thinking about like the courage to show all of those women and invite them to tap into their inner gut instinct and their wisdom. And like what Kimberly just shared and what you're about to host with your training on for how these women can start to take baby steps for a transition to feel safer, you know, kind of shedding the layers of, I just think there's so much there. There's so much space for us to step into our leadership role. Not that I have anything figured out, but in whatever small way I could impact and show and be courageous to influence any of those women who didn't show up here today, but that I invited, they know about it now. And they're asking themselves, how do I show up in the workspace? They're doing that. So there's so much power in the creation that you have built, just in the seeds that you're planting. It's really beautiful. I'm just, I wanted to share that I think the reach goes way further than we might see and know right now. For sure. Thank you for that reflection I receive. And yeah, this is just me following my heart. And, you know, there the fact that there's been repeat speakers coming and repeat, you know, attendees to me speaks to the power of like, this is, and it's not for everyone, right? But um, I love spaces like this. This is, you know, what I do, what I do. And so, you know, please, I, I'm all about supporting you and what you have going on, each of you. So, and I feel like LinkedIn really is this blue ocean that we have untapped, you know, for women like us to show up there and really um, hold space and, and um, you know, share what we have to share, share our voices is so important. And I'm resharing content from like uh, Deborah hosted a vision board workshop last week. I reposted her content. So if you're, if you create content on LinkedIn, I will reshare it. And one quick tip that I shared last week is be a voice for why you're sharing something too. Like don't just share things without adding your own particular thought leadership. There's an opportunity with LinkedIn to add that curated piece of what you think about what you're sharing if it's not your own original content. So that's one of the ways you can begin to just establish your thought leadership and your own unique voice. Whether you agree with what you're sharing or not, you, you wanna give a, a sense of why uh, you're sharing, why you think it's important to add your voice in your slant. Thank you, sisters. Thank you. All. Anyone else feel inspired to share anything? I'm happy you're here, Jill. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you so much. I was going to share something, but it's it's next time. <laughs> you share? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Here. everybody. It was lovely. Much love, everyone. Have a beautiful week. Have a beautiful day, the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Aloha. Thanks, Marna. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Melody. Bye, sisters.